In this video, we are going to review six questions related to material covered in Chapter 3. Bond lengths of carbon fluorine, carbon chlorine, and carbon bromine bonds are 1.39, 1.78, and 1.93 angstroms, respectively. What is the reason for the observed trend? To answer a question like this, you need to read all four questions carefully and eliminate wrong answers. That means eliminating answers that only partially answer the question, so you need to select the best answer, and also those that may contain correct statement, but that statement does not answer the question. So A, as the size of halogen atom increases, halogen atom is less and less electronegative, resulting in a longer bond. It is correct that with increasing size, electronegativity decreases, but that's not directly related to bond length. That means that this is not correct answer. B. As the size of halogen atom increases, the electron affinity of halogen atom decreases, resulting in longer and weaker bond. Just like before, previous question, it is correct that it, with increase in size, electron affinity decreases, but that's not directly related to bond length. So again, not the correct answer. C. As the size of halogen atom increases, halogen's hybrid sp3 orbital that participates in bonding is progressively larger and further away from the nucleus. This is not correct because in a model of bonding, a valence bond, uh, that uh, we are using to explain bonding of carbon to halogen, we assume that halogen atom is not hybridized. We assume that halogen atom utilizes its non-hybridized p, p orbital for bonding. So for that reason, answer C is not correct. And that leaves us with answer D. As the size of halogen atom increases, the p orbital of halogen that participates in bonding is progressively larger and further away from the nucleus. So that's correct answer. Which of the following compounds has the highest boiling point? These four compounds, A through D, are of approximately the same size. Then that means that this question is really which of the following comp compounds exhibits the strongest intermolecular interactions, because magnitude of boiling point is a measure of the strength of the intermolecular interactions. The stronger the intermolecular interactions, the higher the boiling point. That means that in each of these cases, we need to assess which intermolecular interactions are present and how strong they are. And then we can draw a conclusion which of the four compounds will have the highest boiling point. Compound A is an ether. And as an ether, it exhibits dipole-dipole interactions. Those are intermediate in strength, stronger than Lander interactions, but weaker than hydrogen bonding. B is also ether, another ether. So, Strength of intermolecular interactions will be similar to that of compound A. C is a primary amine. It has primary amine. It has NH2 bonds, two NH2 bonds, and is capable of hydrogen bonding. That's considerably stronger compared to ordinary dipole-dipole interactions. And we will draw a conclusion that C is going to exhibit higher boiling point compared to A or B. Finally, D is a tertiary amine. Tertiary amine is capable only of dipole-dipole interactions. It is not capable on its own of hydrogen bonding, which means that intermolecular interactions are weaker to those present in primary amine, C. So for that reason, strongest intermolecular interactions are found in compound C, and that is going to be the compound with highest boiling point. Which of the following compounds is a hydrogen bond acceptor? A hydrogen bond acceptor must be a hydrogen bond acceptor only. So that's a molecule that contains nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine atom, and does not have hydrogen bonded to any of those atoms. Otherwise, if hydrogen is bonded to any of those three atoms, nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, it is a hydrogen bond donor. So compound A actually satisfies this requirement. We have an ether, so oxygen, that is not bonded to a hydrogen. That's a hydrogen bond acceptor. B, we do have in a carbonyl group 
carbon-oxygen double bond, carbonyl group, hydrogen bond acceptor, but we also, we also have an OH group, hydroxyl group. Actually, this functional group overall is carboxyl group. So we have OH group and hydrogen is bonded to oxygen, that's hydrogen bond donor. In compound C, we have secondary amine, so an H bond, another hydrogen bond donor, and compound D is another example of a secondary amine, again, hydrogen bond donor. So of the four, the only one that is a hydrogen bond acceptor is compound A. Which of the following compounds has the lowest solubility in methanol? Solubility is consequence of strength of intermolecular interactions. Compounds that exhibit similar magnitude of intermolecular interactions are soluble in each other, because then one set of intermolecular interactions is replaced by similar set of intermolecular interactions, set of intermolecular interactions of similar energy. That means that in general, compounds that exhibit hydrogen bonding will be soluble in each other, dipole-dipole interactions in each other, and London interactions in each other. If difference in strength of intermolecular interactions is, is rather large, then solubility is very low, or two compounds are immiscible. That's because one would have to break strong intermolecular interactions, for example, hydrogen bonding, and replace them with much weaker interactions between, let's say, polar and non-polar compound, and that would be dipole-induced dipole interactions. And that's obviously not energetically favorable. So for that reason, molecules that exhibit hydrogen bonding exclude those molecules that exhibit weaker interactions from their environment so that they can form hydrogen bonds among themselves and compounds form different layers. So in this specific case, when we, when we consider methanol, methanol exhibits hydrogen bonding, rather strong one, because methanol, CH3OH, is very small alcohol. So there is not much steric hindrance to interfere with hydrogen bonding. And we have, of course, OH group, so primary alcohol, uh, and rather strong hydrogen bonding. When we consider four choices, A is ethanol, so next member of the homologous series of alcohols, that's as similar to methanol as possible. And again, strong hydrogen bonds in ethanol, almost as strong as those in methanol. So the two will be soluble in each other, and, and uh, their miscibility will be pretty much in any ratio. They will mix in any ratio. Compound B is uh, propanoic acid, and carboxylic acids also exhibit strong hydrogen bonds, which means that, again, we would, ex we would expect high solubility of this compound in methanol. Compound C is ethylamine, or ethane amine, if you want to use UPAC nomenclature. Primary amine, again, another compound that exhibits strong hydrogen bonding. And again, we would expect high solubility in methanol. Finally, compound D is molecule of butane. That's nonpolar compound, and since, since it is nonpolar, it's capable only of London interactions. If it were to dissolve in methanol, the only intermolecular interaction possible would be that, that of polar molecules of methanol and nonpolar of butane, which is dipole-induced dipole interaction that's much weaker compared to hydrogen bonding. So for that reason, molecules of methanol would tend to exclude butane from their environment, and solubility would be expected to be very low. So compound D is expected to have the lowest solubility in methanol. Which of the compounds shown below is capable only of London interactions? London interactions are primary interactions or only interactions only if compound is nonpolar. If compound exhibits polarity, then dipole-dipole interactions are present in addition to London interactions. And if compound has uh, NH, OH, or FH bond, then it is also capable of hydrogen bonding in addition to dipole-dipole and London interactions. That means that only Compounds that are nonpolar are capable only of London interactions and nothing else. And that really means that this question is which of the compounds shown below is nonpolar. And so that's how we look at these four. Compound A, neopentane, or 2,2-dimethylpropane, is nonpolar. So that appears to be correct answer. Just to confirm, we should check remaining three. B, 
2 chloro 2 methylpropane that one is obviously polar compound it has polar carbon chlorine bond so it is capable of dipole dipole interactions in addition to lanthanum interactions compound c is a tertiary amine trimethylamine and is capable of dipole dipole interactions in addition to lanthanum interactions finally compound d is ethanoic acid or acetic acid and that one is actually capable of hydrogen bonding of course it is also capable of considerably weaker dipole dipole and lanthanum interactions but principal intermolecular interaction in this compound is hydrogen bonding so that means that correct answer to this question is a arrange the following compounds in the order of increasing boiling points this is similar to one question we encountered earlier in these exercises this one is a little bit more complex because instead of picking one that exhibits the highest or the lowest boiling point now you have to evaluate all four and you have to arrange all four in this case in the order of increasing boiling points so as you already know by now magnitude of a boiling point is a measure of strength of intermolecular interactions that are present in particular compound and that means that we need to arrange these compounds in the order of increasing magnitude of strength of intermolecular interactions intermolecular interactions increase in strength in the order of London interactions that means nonpolar compounds dipole dipole interactions polar compounds and hydrogen bonding the strongest hydrogen bonding is present only in molecules that have NH OH or FH bond so if we start with these four we can see that second compound 2 methyl butane is nonpolar it's an alkane and therefore it's capable only of London interactions you would expect this compound to exhibit the weakest intermolecular interactions then among the remaining three we can see that first compound first from the left is one chloro 2 methylpropane and that compound is polar so it exhibits dipole dipole interactions that would be next in the order of increasing boiling points or increasing strength of intermolecular interactions now we have a little bit of a challenge in that we have two compounds an alcohol and a secondary amine and they both exhibit hydrogen bonding so question is which of the two exhibits stronger hydrogen bonding and it's the alcohol for two reasons first in general the more electronegative atom that is bonded to oxygen the stronger the hydrogen bond so for that reason as a general rule we would expect in alcohols hydrogen bonds to be stronger compared to that of amines second reason is the number of hydrogen bonds alcohol is capable molecule of alcohol is capable of forming three hydrogen bonds one as hydrogen bonds donor through OH bond and two as hydrogen bond acceptor through two free electron pairs on oxygen atom secondary amine is capable of form forming only two hydrogen bonds one as hydrogen bond donor through an H bond and two as and one as hydrogen bond acceptor that second one uh, through its free electron pair so for that reason secondary amine is the next in the order of increasing boiling points and the highest boiling point is that of the alcohol this completes Chapter 3 Exercises